So this is the last talk of the of the session uh, before the break. It will be given by uh, Michal Oftir from Czech Republic, uh, who is a current developer of uh, Tech for HT. In life, Michal, uh, Michal works at the library of Charles University in Prague, uh, where basically you, you told me you apply LaTeX to everything you can, from uh, publication list to uh, book labels, uh, posters, and everything. So that's nice. <laughs> Uh, in addition to tech for ht you uh, wrote several other packages, uh, and the good thing is that you are really active on uh, Stack Exchange, so people can contact you on Stack Exchange if they uh, made problems with your packages. Uh, and now I think we can uh, listen to you about uh, tech for ht Yeah, this chart. Um, yeah. I think I will make a quick introduction and then we can start the video. Sure. Uh, so Tech4HT is um, latex to HTML and XML converter. It's based on um, direct uh, co conversion from latex. It's used tech for the conversion. So it supports all commands and packages, but it has a cage effect because um, it in order to insert um, XML commands, it needs to redefine a lot of internal commands of LaTeX and packages. So sometimes it uh, uh, it can clash. So in my talk, I I will show some com common issues. Uh, I will show how to um, modify output. How um, because the technology is uh, highly configurable, so you can configure almost everything. And uh, I will also show how to fix some basic caches caused by uh, some package uh, options or yeah, by package caches. Uh, I will post um, links uh, to the chat because so you, you will not see them in the video. So uh, watch, the, watch the chat uh, for, for the links. I will post links to, to a new Tech4HT documentation, which is a work in progress, but uh, it already con contains some useful information. And now I think we can start my video. This chart describes basic Tech4HT workflow. First of all, we need to Load to compile our tech file using tech engine. It could be PDF tech, Lua tech, or ZTech. The important thing is to compile it to the DVI format, which can be then processed by the 4 ht command. This command can extract HTML files and prepare some special files for the next step that creates CSS files and images. Usually, we use some helper scripts to run this workflow. But in this example, I will show you how to run Tech4HT directly. As you can see, we use package Tech4HT in this example, and it will load all the necessary commands that will product HTML file. Now I can uh, compile this file to DVI or use it later. As you can see from the log file, it uh, draws a lot of files that uh, that have for HD extension. Now we need to convert this TV DVI file to HTML using Tech for HD. This was really fast. To get a CSS file, we need to run the last command, which is T for HD. And now we can show the resulting HTML file. So you can see that um, we can see that uh, direct font commands works. So we have large bold hello world. We have dioctritics. When we see the source code, things are not so not so nice because extended um, characters are presented as um, HTML entities, and you can see that uh, these entities in um, are broken into several elements, which is not, not really nice. To get um, 
HTML file document in Unicode car set, we need to pass some options to the HD package. This is the basic um, form how these options should look. On the first position, you should always use XHTML. HTML file is for HTML support and char set um, UTF-8 character set in the HTML document. We can convert it to DVI file again. And we need to pass some options to the HVHT command in order to support um, Unicode. So the, this command and again the HVHT again without any options. You can see the resulting document. It looks the same, but uh, it, it looks differently in the source code. So you can see that we are now in HTML format and that characters looks much better. And, and this word is not broken into several parts. There are two main issues with this, with this manual workflow that I just showed you. First of all, we don't want to add the HVHT package to, to the document because it will break the completion to the PDF format. And second is that it is really tedious. So we have some helper scripts that will make our life easier. In this example, I removed the HVHT package and we can now compile it directly using HTLATECH script. It was fast and as you can see from the source code, it creates the same result as the first example. If we want to create HTML file in the Unicode encoding, we need to pass options to tech for hd We can pass the same options that we passed in, in the second example. We need to also pass uh, options to tech for hd commands. And this, this can be done in the second, third parameter. And now it looks much better. But there are still some issues. So the main issue is that um, HTI tech run latex three times, which uh, can be really, really slow if you have a big document and it's not um, usually necessary. Tech for HT compiles document three times in order to support uh, cross references and, and um, similar stuff. But it's not, uh, not necessary in every occasion, so we m may want to run it just once to save same time. Tech for HT supports several output um, file formats. The basic one is H HTML that is used by default, but it supports also open document format for LibreOffice and M Microsoft Word, Tay, Dogbook, and some other formats. The Best support is for HTML and open document because we have the most um, user requests for them. For example, to make file in open document format, we would need to pass a lot of options to HTLATECH and it will be really hard to, to use it. For this reason, we have one helper script, MK4HT, that um, can do the hard work for us. This is the basic form. OO LATEC means that we are compiling to open document format. When I wanted to add EPUB support, I found that these scripts are not really citable for this task. So I created a new tool, which is named tech for ebook uh, As you can see, it um, behaves a little bit different. Then h 3 tech it um, hides the terminal output by default, but you can show it using using options. It, uh, it has um, class, classic, uh, classic options that um, are common for um, Unix scripts. So if we want to see the terminal output, we can use option a debug and it will show the same output as H2ATech. One difference is when your document contains errors. We can show some basic example. Here, 
here we have one unknown command and we can see how we'll react actually tech and tech for ebook yeah as you can see actually tech um, stopped stopped on the first error and it will not make any output tech for ebook um, will run the compilation but uh, it will highlight the errors if we run it with the the back um, the back options it uh, runs crazy latex so you can assume compilation stop which will st st stop the compilation as in the case of h latex another feature is that it can run just uh, one latex run which is done by m like mode uh, draft uh, options we will show we will use the debug option as well to show that latex is run only once for ebook um, supports only epub and uh, kindle formats but when i made it i found that it it could be used also for the other formats and so so i made um, a new tool that um, is used for all the older formats like uh, html or open document and this tool is named make make for hd it supports uh, the same options as the for ebook to select a different format we can use the f option so for example if i want to make open document format I can use the FODT option and here we are. Make for HD supports a lot of other options as you can see from the help, help option. I already showed you the A option and mode options. Other, other useful options are L that will use Luatech for the compilation or X for ZTech. We want to compile our document using Luatech. We can just uh, use L option. Yeah, we use Luatech in this in this compilation. An important uh, distinction from HTLATech command is that uh, Make for HT uses HTML5 and Unicode support by default. So this is HTML5 and you can see that we have Unicode characters and also that um, this word that used to be broken over several elements is now connected into one word. This is enabled by the Make4HT extension support because Make4HT post process the HTML files by default. It uses LuaXML library to fix some common errors, such as this one with broken characters. If we want to disable this um, post processing, we need to disable it on the command line. Extensions can be enabled or disabled um, using the F option. We can use HTML5 minus which will disable the common DOM filters extension that is used by default and it will make similar um, document to our Unicode h 2 tech example. As you see, the characters are broken again. make for hd supports several extensions as you can see from the documentation. I already showed you the common DOM filters which are used by default but they are under other interesting extensions. First of them is preprocess input because it um, enables make for hd to process markdown documents or R documents. I created an example for RTech. This document um, uses R code and tech code and we can compile it using the process input um, extension. 
we can pass options to make for HT like to H3 tech. There is a, a difference that uh, we don't need to pass X, XHTML as the first option. We can just use options that we want. SVG means that we will use SVG graphics for the generated pictures. But now we can just run our example. This is the resulting document. Another make for HT feature that I want to show you is the build file support. We use the iMake IDX package and we create two indexes. One is main and the other is secondary. The build file is, uh, is written in RAW and the mode var variable contains the mode um, option of make, make for HT. So if we want to support the fast compilation, we need to support it in the build file. So if we use the draft mode, we just run one HT LaTeX, which is one LaTeX run. But when we want to produce the index, we need to run LaTeX first to produce the necessary IDX files. Then xindex, which uh, runs the xindex command, it uh, supports the split, split index syntax, so we can use just one xindex and it will create both the main index and the secondary index. Because the indexing commands produce um, hyperlinks, we need to run htlatex two times in order to make the hyperlinks work. So the build files can be requested using the E option. So we can run it now. This is the resulting HTML file. And in, in the below, we have our main and secondary index. Click on the index numbers. It will take you to the, the index uh, position. We do most of Make for HT features, and now it's the time to switch to Tech for HT Tech configuration. This example, I have documents that um, creates several sections, and uh, I will show you how to how to change the document look and structure. Compile this document using just Make for HT without any options. It will look like this. This is just really basic page, and as you can see, the document, the, the footnote creates a separate file, so you need to click on it to see what's in the footnote. We have a long document, we may want to split it into split pages. It can be easily browsed. Tech for HT has a built-in option for, for this feature. It will look like this. Our sections are now in separate pages, so they are easier to digest. Now these sections are named by the titles, so we have first section and second section. There is still the issue with the footnote, which is um, on the separate page. So we may want to insert it in the page, which can be done using fn in option. Now the footnote is inserted directly in the page and it's much more useful than the default default footnotes top. This stuff supported uh, tech for HT options is in the documentation. It doesn't contain all of them because there are hundreds of options, but the most important ones are are here. Tech for HT produces pretty plain document by default. If, if you want to change the design, we need to use some CSS code. For this, we need a private configuration file. There is a documentation about private configuration file in the new Tech for HT documentation. And now we can take a look at some simple examples. 
So this is a basic example of configuration file. There are three, co three commands that are um, necessary to use in any configuration file. It's a preamble, which can um, preamble, which that can have some tech for ht option as an arg argument. So we pass the options that we use with make for ht And as you can see, we need to use XHTML again. Then there is a begin document. It means that um, commands that you put after after this this command will be executed um, after the begin document in your LaTeX file. And we need to close the configuration file using end preamble. There is one another command and it is CSS. This command is used to put short run CSS code in your tech document. So we can try it. The private configuration file can be loaded using C option. The HTML file is now narrower and it is more readable. You may want to use some more advanced CSS code and it will be pretty tedious to use the CSS commands in the configurations files. So it's possible to link directly to the CSS files in the configurations file. I use the configuration file to link the HTML file to this downloaded uh, CSS file. I can use the configure, configure edit the CSS command for this. Uh, the configure command is um, most used um, command in the configuration configurations files. The configurations are declared in the HD configurations files for packages and uh, the added CSS configuration is used to link to internal CSS files. So we can try it now. Yeah, so now you can see that this, this page now looks totally different and I guess modern. You can also link to the external CSS files that are located somewhere on the web. Um, this example uses LaTeX CSS that, that tries to mimic the default LaTeX look. And as you can see, you should put this line to your document head. Here is another example of configuration file. We use different configure command. The head head um, configuration put um, code into the HTML head element. There are some new new commands. Hcode is used to put um, HTML or XML elements in your document. It is necess necessary because um, otherwise these special characters will be escaped and uh, it will not work. And H new line puts new line into the HTML file. And now this HTML page looks a bit like later document in the PDF mode. There are several places where you can find documentation for the configurations. First of all, this is the new documentation. Um, incrementally put documentation from the all, all sources and also documentations for the new new configurations that uh, we add, but there is also a lot of information in the old documentation, especially in the configurations um, section. Some information is obsolete, but uh, it is still useful. You can click on these numbers and it will show you some example use usage. Another source of documentation which is uh, not uh, well known and it's quite hidden is produced by the info option. It uh, puts uh, some documentation in the log file, so you need to open the log file and 
There will be there will be some information that is neither in the new documentation and in the old documentation. This one is still really really useful. For HD supports several ways how to output math. By default, it uh, creates mix mixture of pictures and um, HTML documents, but it also supports MathML and MathJax. I will show you all of these methods on this sample sample document, and uh, we will discuss some issues of all these methods. So the default method. We'll create something like this. As you can see, it doesn't look re really nice. The equation is output as uh, image, as well as uh, this square root, but um, some simpler elements are output as HTML. We can request um, all maps to be in um, pictures using Cam option. Now all these all math is in pictures, but as you can see there are some issues, namely that um, the inline mass is not uh, correctly vertically al aligned and it looks really bad. But as we already know we can use SVG option to output in the SVG format and it will look a bit better, but the com compression is a bit, bit longer. Yeah, so this looks much better. We may want to make the compression faster, and we can use one extension that is suitable for that. The DVSG mesh is um, compares just um, mass elements that uh, changed from the previous compilation, and it. Um, uses multiple processors for the completion so it's much faster. Another um, option is the MassML, which uh, looks better, but as it has uh, an, another issues. It is that uh, it works correctly only in Firefox and if we show our document in Chrome. You can see that we lost all subscripts and square root and stuff like this. For this reason, it's better to use the MassJax library to render MassML. Um, it looks much better also in Firefox because it uses different fonts and it looks um, correctly even in Chrome. We can also use just MassJax for, for mass. There is a catch that it um, doesn't support um, custom commands and the referencing. We need to provide some configuration for MassJax. Configure MassJax, MassJax config that, that passes uh, the configuration for MassJax and we need to put definition of our custom command here. We also can redefine the eqref command to output the eqref into the HTML output and, and MassJax will support that. So we can try this configura configuration file. Yeah, and as, as you can see it, it, now, it now works correctly. Another common issue is related to images. Tech4HD doesn't have access to image dimensions, so we need to create a special file with image dimensions in order to support them correctly. This is the default output, and as, as you can see, the image is square, and this is not this is not correct. We need to use ebbx um, command to create a xbb file 
и с ново контент the image dimensions and now the fresh can correctly calculate image dimensions yeah so it, it looks correctly now another common source of issues is package clashes this one is uh, one that I found recently so I haven't fixed it in the sources yet so we can try this innocently looking document how it will compile yeah you can see that it produces fatal error in cases like this it is best to find the package that caused tech4ht to fall and to edit your tech file to ignore this um, package or to use different uh, options that will not cause these issues. In general, tech4ht tries to avoid need to edit your document, but uh, in cases like this, it's uh, really necessary. I found that um, the fatal error is caused by PDF tech option for graphics package. So we can use the if defined H code. H code is command defined by tech for ht and it's not used by default in LaTeX. We can use it to detect if tech for, tech for ht is active and if it is, we can use graphics package without any options and else we can use the PDF tech option. You can see how it will work and, and it um, compiles without errors. So this was my last example. If you have any questions and suggestions, you can contact us at tech4ht mailing list. We have also issue tracker that where you can submit bugs or if you use text exchange you can ask questions with tech4ht tag and I will find it and I will try to answer it. Thank you for watching and see you. Thank you so much, Michal, for this uh, very rich tutorial. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Uh, it was a bit fast because um, I made it too too long, so I had to cut it down. And maybe I was a bit too aggressive, but <laughs> but uh... it, it was faster. But we will have the video afterwards, so we can replay it and uh, try your examples. Huh? So yes, yes, I will. I will put my examples on, on my GitHub, so it will be possible to, to run them also for, for other, other people. Okay. I can see that Boris has a question. Huh? Uh, first, it's absolutely great work. I have been using uh, tech for hd uh, for a long time, and what you are doing is absolutely heroic. It's great. I I have uh, I have two questions. Uh, first, um, the documentation you cite uh, a little bit balkanized. It's somewhere here, somewhere there. Are you going to put uh, everything on uh, C10 so I, we can just say tech doc something can get your documentation? And my second, okay. Uh, and my second question is uh, about uh, tables. To get accessible HTML, I need to put some information about tables, where is the heading, where is the normal cell. Uh, is it possible for tech for ht I, I, Whether you have a solution for this right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for your first question, yeah, it's definitely the plan. Once I have the new documentation that I showed, once, uh, yeah, once I migrate all the old information and uh, add a new, new, new documentation. Yeah, I will put it to, on C10 and it will be available in TextDoc. So yeah, it's definitely a, a plan, yeah. yeah the, the issue is that I'm really slow in the writing of the, of the documentation. So I, I can't say when it will happen because 
I, I'm working on, on this for, I think, maybe four years already. So, yeah, so there is no, 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 no deadline, I think. Or maybe I, I can use some help because uh, it's um, the sources of the documentations are on GitHub. So every, everyone can um, migrate some some bit of the old documentation to, to the new one. And regarding the second question, yeah, tables are quite different because, yeah, be, because they are one of the most uh, difficult uh, stuff in tech for hd sources. And there are also many packages that uh, changes uh, tables handling like taboo and uh, Excel table, table and all this. So yeah, it's uh, quite hard. I think uh, I fix uh, some table issues using make for hd extensions, yeah, because uh, I can use uh, raw XML to post-process post uh, the HTML file. So, so I think uh, this is the best uh, thing to do. So if you have uh, an example, you can post it uh, to the mailing list or, or to, to my mail. And uh, yeah, I, I can try to add support for your, for your needs. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Actually, uh, actually, I was thinking whether to contribute some code rather than ask you to write it. And my question was rather a way to ask whether it's already written. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. There is a question from Rajesh in the q and and Rajesh, you can speak now. Mm. Yeah, I can read it. I have read your answer on Stack Exchange that Tech for HT supports full Unicode using ZTech engine. This still post process XDVI. Uh, yeah, in the, there is a issue with uh, Tech for HT command, the, the command that post process the DVI files, that it doesn't support uh, open type fonts. When it um, finds open type font in the DVI file, it will fail with uh, fatal errors. So we actually need to, uh, we need to suppress open type fonts. So in LoaTeX, we use uh, Lua callbacks to out output uh, Unicode, um, yeah, to output special, special commands that uh, contains Unicode um, characters and in ZTech, we use macros, so we just redefine um, all related uh, uh, characters by default. But uh, you can uh, you can load um, redefinitions for other scripts. So you need to load uh, definitions for Cyrillic and Greek and Indian scripts. I can post. Uh, link to, to the chat because uh, this is actually described in the new, new documentation but yeah but this is uh, one thing this is, that is um, uh, hard to, to do we there is a alternative version of tech for ht command that supports uh, open type fonts but it's still in development it's developed it by vtech tech company from Lithuania. So I hope uh, we will be able to use it uh, one, one day and yeah, and um, be able to just uh, forget about this hex for Zitech and Ruatech. Thank you. Uh, there is a Martin, you raise your hand. Yeah. Um... I have a question. This is very impressive stuff you did there. Congratulations, Thanks. you did a very good job. Um, I have a question regarding the output routines. That's a problem that I always face, that the output routines do things that uh, I don't want to have in my 
end format. And I think uh, with HTML, you might have a similar problem. How did you deal with all the things that the output routines insert in the DVI file? Uh, part of that you don't want to have in your XML file and others you want to have like um, floats or things like that. Yes, this is uh, uh, this, this this stuff was written by the original author by Aitan Gurari. <clears throat> so, yeah, this is a bit like a black box, I would say. So, yeah, there is uh, definitely some redefinitions in the output routine, and uh, therefore, therefore, HT disables, for example, hyphenation, and it changes uh, documents. Uh, the dimensions in order to fit everything on one line. And um, yeah, so I think um, floats are supported because uh, it uh, pitches latex like internal code to get them. And uh, most stuff you put to the, to the output, output routine is not supported. Uh, and, and how do you handle floats, floating images? Um, yeah, I, see the output routine might move the float around someplace. Yeah, I think they are just output at the place they, they are used. They don't float anymore. Ah, they don't Maybe. float. Any yes. But uh, in the when you process the DVI file, you might find the float at a different position where it is in the original text file. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is handled uh, on the latex side. Yeah. So it doesn't float anymore. Uh -huh. So it stays yeah. where it is where latex puts it in the output. Yes. Ah, okay. And you make it the, uh, the pages wide to avoid uh, floating. Do you make the pages high to avoid floating? Or uh, no, 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 no. No. Uh, they are just slight, slightly bigger. And yeah, the yeah, I think the main 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 stuff is that hyphenation is disabled because you don't want hyphenated words yeah. in HTML. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Very good. There is a question from uh, Dejan in the in the chat. And Dejan, you can speak if you want. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't see new questions in the chat. I see only from Rajesh. Uh, yes, in, in the Q and R uh, only from Rajesh, but in, in the in the chat where yeah, there are all the messages and your the URLs on. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, can you can you read it, please? Because I don't. Um... Oh, uh, in chat. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh... Ah, yes. Yeah. So I'm curious. Does Tech for HT have a fixed schema for the HTML dialects it emits? When you guess its own HTML has its own tracks, has yet another. Do you think we can get most projects closer to uh, consistent technical technical? Document dialect, dialect of HTML. Yeah, the thing is that uh, yeah, the most of the conf configurations that we use uh, are collect uh, have been collected for the last yeah almost twenty five years, I think. So some of them are really old. So in the I I put some new new stuff in HTML five. Output, but uh, for most stuff we still use HTML4, and yeah, we we don't really have uh, any dialect because uh, at the moment I we have so so many bug reports about package support that uh, I have real, I don't have a lot of energy to rewrite uh, hundreds of configurations to to be put together, so. In general, it will be nice, but I don't have uh, capacity for that. Uh, 
is it possible that packages could provide the support for their packages in tech for HE? I know that's not something that's in your power, but you're providing them a service. Perhaps uh, the owners of the package should have a responsibility for supporting tech for HT. That's just a suggestion. I don't think it will get anywhere. Uh, uh, yeah, it will be nice, but yeah, because there is still missing documentation about package support of writing. Uh, uh, yeah, we can't, uh, we cannot uh, expect uh, package writers to make a uh, support. So at the moment, I do most of the package uh, support. Yeah, but yeah, def definitely I should put um, package uh, package support documentation together and uh, yeah, and to uh, attract uh, more more um, input from other people because yeah, it's a lot of work and uh, it can be it can be quite hard. So um, so some coordination with package writers will be really really nice. But yeah, I think uh, because of uh, new new uh, development in um, late access accessibility, especially the hooks, uh, they already already enable to quite e easily uh, put um, XML, put tech for HT code to late tech internals. So I think in the future it will be it will be much easier to, to, to add support. And uh, in general, you, you, don't, uh, you don't need uh, support for packages because uh, Tech4HT can detect uh, font changes. So the basic stuff works. You, re you only need uh, support if you want uh, to make, I don't know, for example, some frame boxes or or if you want to output uh, some semantic HTML, you need uh, you need support. But by default, if uh, you know, if the package doesn't crash with the 4 ht because it defines the same across as the 4 ht it doesn't read uh, any support for the basic basic work. Frank has a question, I think. Well, uh, more more comment, but you you already made it in some sense. Uh, part of why we have the hook system being set up is is to enable these kind of alterations that are necessary for something like um, take to um, HT um, to 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 become smooth in the sense that the the, the right kind of places for for doing alterations is, is actually there. So in some sense, what would be really helpful is to get help in the sense of where are the points where you need these kind of hooks to be available in various places, because if we are able to put them in the right places, um, then um, that will ripple down to, to uh, additional support packages in the sense that they will pick up these kind of things as being part of their alteration for say for, for table or and stuff like that. And so getting where we, we are trying obviously to, 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 to get the right things in the right places by ourselves in some sense, but we are not always being aware of, of the need that there is um, a hook necessary in a certain place. So if you come across these kind of things, um, feeding that back to um, the LaTeX team will, will actually um, benefit both sides in some sense, because then we can make sure that this fits with our um, sort of additional support for the um, for conversions as well as for for accessibility as well as for tagging etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, just as a as a general comment here um, that's that's really part of why why the hook system has been been set up and um, over time will grow yes thank you Frank yes yes yeah this this is yeah this is definitely Good, good, good comment. Uh, yeah, actually, I, 
already use the books system for environment and this is um, it is really great because there are so many points where you can put um, some some code and in general uh, every yeah base basic commands that um, just um, change fonts uh, you, you need uh, some hook before before this command and after the command to put um, starting uh, starting tag and stop tag but yeah but for example some frames or tables they are much much more much more complicated It's now the end of the session, but I don't see any inconvenient if people want to stay here during the break to uh, chat about a technical points. I can see the discussion is uh, going on uh, nicely. I will just uh, thank everyone, uh, all the speakers for the great talks that we had uh, during this session. Also for Arthur that is doing a wonderful job in the back office, uh, managing the video and everything. <laughs> And I will leave you for the next session that will start in uh, 53 minutes. But uh, again, uh, people can stay here to, to chat during the break. Okay. Thanks.